Recently, we released a video called Five Best Settlement Build Locations in Fallout 4, where we showcase settlements that offer excellent potential for large, impressive, and aesthetically pleasing settlements that can be constructed by you, the player, with minimum challenge. In this video, we thought it was only fair to show you five settlements that are not that way. These are settlements that offer little in the way of raw potential and come with a difficulty curve that could make the devs at From Software hurl their controllers across the room in frustration. While it can be very satisfying to conquer one of these sites on this list by creating a settlement that we can be proud to call our own, they may prove to be more trouble than they're worth. So pull up a chair that still has four legs and crack open a box of yum yum deviled eggs because I'm Gray, you're watching Gray Gaming, and today we're showing you the five worst settlement build locations in Fallout 4. As with our last video, we will be focusing primarily on the build sites themselves, though we do also make considerations for things like convenience of travel, crisis events surrounding locations, and so on. We will not be including considerations for aspects that can be made better with mods or console commands. With all that out of the way, let's jump right in at number 5 with the least horrible. At first glance, this is a great location. The opportunity to build your own life underground in a real vault tech style vault is simply too good to pass up. The underground rail yard is expansive and exploring the cave system can be fun in and of itself. Revealing the entirety of the Vault 88 region is an interesting mix of clearing obstructions using the workshop, followed by grueling combat as you uncover mole rat dens, rad scorpion nests, and even deathclaw burrows. The cave system we have to work with is absolutely massive, with three separate entrances that seem to span the entirety of the South Boston area, and a whopping four workshops that have to be unlocked in order to gain access to the entire system. But once that last deathclaw has fallen and we settle into build our vault, cruel reality greets us with a backhand slap, a six pack of IPAs that need drunk, and a DVD collection of the final season of Game of Thrones, just in case your day wasn't bad enough. Sadly, many would-be overseers learn too late that the site chosen for Vault 88 isn't all it's cracked up to be. The rail yard that serves as the main antechamber for your vault isn't quite as expansive as it first appears, meaning you're going to have to scale back that grand atrium you had planned. The cave system is huge, but changes depth several times, meaning you can't connect the several larger chambers together with long vault tech tunnels, and if you want to expand outside of the rail yard, you will have no choice but to leave the clean and pristine interiors of your new vault to muck about in the caves. Adam help you if you make the mistake of powering that awesome vault tech water purifier down here, producing enough clean water for 100 settlers, far more than can be attracted to your location without mods or console commands, you're sure to make this site a prime target for large and frequent attacks on the settlement, which when they come from every end of your cave system means that they can take several minutes to deal with, irreparably breaking your gameplay loop. Add the post-exploration tedium of having to scrap all the junk limestone and uranium from the sprawling complex just to have a decent shot at building your vault in the first place, and Vault 88 serves as a shining example of great premise, terrible execution. Situated on the northern Atlantic coastline is the quaint and peaceful sounding coastal cottage. A place with such a tranquil and relaxing name must be a decent place to locate a settlement. Well, guess again. The cottage is completely collapsed, barring a single wall and the front porch, and is unscrappable. Most of the cottage is now located in a sinkhole which has been burrowed into a yaogwai den. Strangely enough, settler pathing routines have your settlers pay regular visits to the sinkhole, so if you try and cover it up to create more buildable area, your settlers will become trapped underground. The site is littered with things which can normally be scrapped at other sites like stands of small trees, ratty old couches, and small shipping containers, but alas here, they're a permanent decoration. The garage is mostly intact aside from a hole in the roof, but it's littered with debris and is too small to do much with. The buildable area and build ceiling are some of the smallest in the entire game, and the terrain is quite possibly the worst of all settlement locations, with boulder cliff faces, steep hills, and all the junk that we mentioned earlier scattered about, it can be a serious serious challenge to even pick a starting point to build from. Add in the fact that raiders, feral ghouls, synths, a territorial deathclaw, and mire alert queen all spawn nearby, and you have a recipe for a big old bowl of nope. In all honesty, Jamaica Plain has a lot going for it. 
There are a lot of interesting things to see and do in the surrounding area, and its relatively safe positioning makes it a great staging area if you plan to explore the South Boston area. However, when it comes to actually building here, there's a lot of extra room in that pros column. Most of your buildable real estate is hogged up by boarded up houses, and the ones that you do have access to are full of holes that are difficult to patch without the use of mods, console commands, or glitches. Other large objects like school buses can't be removed either and can really limit your defensive planning. There is a parking lot on one end of the settlement that gives you some flexibility to work with, but your options to build are pretty much in the street or on the rooftops, making it difficult to build anything that makes this settlement appear inviting or impressive. For those of you who complain that the Boston Airport is an impossible location to work with, allow us to introduce you to the Mechanist Lair. This location sparks the imagination and brings us back to the feeling of being a kid who just discovered their first cheesy over-the-top superhero comic book. Reaching and unlocking this layer is some of the most fun that can be had in Fallout 4, even if the story doesn't try and take itself too seriously. However, once you're done scrapping all the junk, guardrails, and catwalks, and start trying to decide what to build, the realization of just how badly the deck is stacked against you starts to set in. The restrictions are pretty much the same as the Boston Airport, preventing you from planting crops, stores, and recruitment radio beacons, so if you want actual people to live here, you're going to have to send them from other settlements one at a time, and they aren't going to be happy once they get here. Unlike the Boston airport, there is no dirt in which to place water pumps, so you can wave goodbye to the thought that this could ever be a self-sustaining settlement, requiring a provisioner connection to a network that is capable of supporting this site in addition to all the others. Of course, the intention here is that you, as the new mechanist, are supposed to populate this place with robots who don't need water, food, meaningful work, and social belonging like pitiful organics. However, with the high resource cost of building and modifying your automatrons, and the fact that they're just here, existing, it's not really a prospect that many players are willing to invest the time, energy, or much needed resources to accomplish. Let's ditch the cutesy intro on this one and just say it like it is, Hangman's Alley sucks. By all rights, it should be an awesome location. Located right on the northern edge of the Boston ruins, a stone's throw from Diamond City, right off the major road networks, and smack dab in the center of the Commonwealth, location, 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 right? But that's about all Hangman's Alley really has going for it. Bugged settler behavior prevents them from accessing the back half of the alley, so they'll all just stand around in a circle instead of going where they're supposed to. A lot of the dead bodies displayed by the previous raider inhabitants are located just outside the buildable area, so the rotten heaps can't be removed without console commands or mods. The largest of the raider's shack structures can't be scrapped or easily integrated with workshop items, so it just sort of sits there hogging up desperately needed real estate. The alley, as its name implies, is narrow, and filled with obstructions and piles of debris, and the many AC units, ductwork, pipes, and balconies hanging from the alley walls make it so you can't even hug the walls all too closely with your enhancements. Can't build wide, you say? I guess I'll just build up. Easy fix. You're so clever. Except the ceiling at Hangman's Alley is one of the lowest in the entire game, meaning you can't even build halfway to the top of the alley before you exit the buildable area. Enemies spawn inside the alley during attacks, and patrols of raiders and super mutants often just wander right into the alley, meaning you can never truly relax at this location. Just save yourself a lot of time, headache, and frustration by purchasing home plate in Diamond City. At least it's upfront about its limitations and has the benefit of being safely located inside the great green jewel of the Commonwealth. So that's our list. Do you think we went a little overboard with our assessments here? Let us know your least favorite build location in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this, drop us a like, and if you want to get notified every time we drop new content on this channel, please consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell. But with that, we're ready to wrap up, so until next time, stay safe, and we hope to see you all here next time on Grey Gaming.